Hey guys, my name is Leslie van den Broek and today I'm going to show you how to texture a character using Quixel's new Dedu. First off, the character I'm creating is based on a concept by the awesome Max Davenport and I first gonna show you some of the steps you need to do before you jump into Dedu itself. So what I did first was I created a sculpt inside of ZBrush, which you can see right here. When I completed the sculpt, I assigned different poly paint colors to different regions that need to get a different material type. So for example, the yellow is going to be a goldish color, the brown is going to be a leather, and the orange is going to be a cloth. There's not much to it. The only thing you need to make sure of is that your color assignments don't have blended edges. Because if the edges blend between two colors, it will create a separate color in between and Dido will think it's a different material ID. What you can do to paint these colors inside of ZBrush is you take your standard brush, you make sure Z add and Z sub are off, RGB is on, put it to 100%. And if I have my focal shift on the default zero, what you will see is if I try to paint like a red color on the yellow, here you see you have this very soft edge, which you can't have because this is basically not the same red anymore as this. What do you do is just decrease your focal shift to minus 100 and you see now you have a crisp patch. So this is what you want. After you've done all of that, make sure all the colors are separate colors for each material, which are different enough so they don't blend over either. So don't take like this orange for example and make your parts that need a different material a slightly more saturated orange that might give some trouble in the long run so don't do that except for that you can pick any color you want and assign it to the different material regions after you've done that you export your high poly to obj's the OBJ will automatically include your uh, vertex colors, like the poly paint colors as vertex colors. So you can bake them out using X normal. Once we have our high poly, we need to create a low poly and bake all our textures we want. I have four textures I baked and I'll show them right now. So the first one is an ambient occlusion. The second one is the color map, which I showed previously in ZBrush. So these are the poly paint colors, which are baked over. You can still refine the map here, uh, however you want. Just make sure all the edges are crisp. The third one is a gradient map, which is just a gradient from bottom to top, black to white. And the last one is the normal map with all your details. Now that we have these maps, we can jump into Dedu. First thing you'll notice once you've launched the Quixel Suite is this little panel right here. It contains a few buttons. First one is for Endu, second one is for Dedu, third one is for the Megascans, and the final one is for Tredu. We'll mostly be using Dedu and 3Do in this tutorial, so let's click Dedu. When you first launch Dedu, what it will do is it will present you with the base creator. What Dedu asks of you here is all of your input textures, so the baked maps and your low poly mesh. So if I click one of the slots, it will ask to input either a map or your mesh. So I'll now input my mesh. Now for the other ones, I can either click it and select the one that corresponds with the slot, 
or what I can do is I can press this button right here and I can now press the quick load button then select one of the maps in my folder and what Dido will do for you is it will find all of the corresponding maps for each slot or the ones that are available in the map and it will automatically fill it out so you don't have to do it manually. Now that we have all of our textures supplied, I'll show you the links button uh, right at the ID map tab. If I click it, it will open up the ID link editor for us. And what you can see is all of these colors right here correspond with the colors in the map. What you can do now is either assign a color right here in this editor or you can do it later. Now the, be the benefit of doing it now would be you can save out these presets and if you have uh, another mesh with the same color IDs for the same materials later on you can just load the preset so you don't have to do it again. Here I can for instance set the material to iron and what Dido will do for me if I click the create base button it will automatically create that iron base material for me so I don't have to do it later on again. I'm gonna click done since I am going to set up my materials later on uh, but it will still create that iron material I just assigned. There are a few more options we need to go through before we can click the create base button, the first one being the calibration profile. Uh, this depends on which software you'll be using in the end. So you're creating textures to be used in let's say Unreal Engine 4 or UDK, then click the right corresponding application right here. I'm using Toolback 2 so I'm gonna set it to Toolback 2. Next up we have Texel Density and we're gonna leave it at that. Work resolution, if you set it to 100% it will be creating, for instance in my case, uh, 4K maps. It will be generating 4K maps for previewing, which is quite heavy on my current working PC. So I'll keep it at 50%. You'll be able to change this later on too so no worries if you set it to 100% in the beginning you can still change it to something lower and you can always export uh, high resolution anytime so let's keep this lower next up flip normal Y I'm not using a flipped green channel in my normal map so I won't have to apply this create base layers uh, what that does is for each undefined slot in my link editor it will create a base with the right masking for that color. I don't want that right now so I'm gonna keep this off. 16-bit materials I'm not using those so I'll also not select this and then metalness is if you're using the metalness workflow which I'm not gonna do so I'm not gonna press this. Then we have our output maps. So which maps do I want Dido to create? I'm only gonna disable the pump. The rest of the maps I am going to use. You can set as much maps if you want. Uh, it's all up to you which maps you want for your final presentation. So I'm just gonna pick these ones right now. And then we have our export path in which our project is going to be created. Uh, by default it's based on the mesh location and name. If you already have some projects in there like I have, some previous projects for Dido, it's going to add a numeric value behind the base name so you won't be overriding your previous attempts at texturing. So with everything set up, we can click the create base button. 
What Dido is doing now is preparing all of our input maps for use within Dido, and it's creating our material basis which we have assigned. If we did an input uh, cavity map, Dido will generate one for us, so we don't have to do it ourselves, and we can still use cavity masking as a masking type within Dido. Once Dido is done generating, it will present you with this panel right here. Uh, as you can see, you have your different map types at the top. So I have my specular, normal, gloss, AO, and albedo. You'll also see it changes your map once you click one of them. So now I'm viewing my normal, now I'm viewing my specular, and now I'm viewing my albedo. It also created the iron material I assigned earlier to the darkish ID. If I click this button right here, you'll see it set iron to this color ID. You have a few options here. The first button being the visibility of that iron material. So you see it is now hidden. If I click it again, it is visible. You have the map icon, which goes into the material group. Once I do so, I'll be presented with the different materials within the material group. So you see I have an iron material and I have a miscoloration on top of that material. A few more things are the first button is my material so if I click it you'll be present with the material browser and I can set any material that's within the library or the ones I saved out myself. So let's keep it at that for now. Then we have our mask. If you click that, it will open the mask editor, so the Dynamask editor. In this Dynamask editor, you see you have a few presets in this column right here. By pressing these, you'll adjust the settings on the right, which you see here. You can open up each tab and adjust everything to your own liking. So you can select a preset for instance and still adjust everything. So it behaves the way you want it to. But I'll go more in depth on this later on when I'm creating my own material. So let's close it right now. The power of Dido, of course, is that you can preview all of the adjustments you make to your texture live on your mesh. If you click the tree do button in your main panel, it will open up your mesh and the preview textures you are creating. You can drag your mouse to rotate the mesh. You can hold shift and rotate everything around for the IBL, so the light changes direction. If you hit space, you can select a different preview mesh and you can change your lighting IBLs and apply rotation to your IBL or your mesh. It's really handy to check your textures while you're creating them in the different lighting conditions so you know the textures are behaving the way you want them to. Let's turn spin off. There's a few more extra options which are mostly rendering based so I'm not going to go too deep into those. You'll just have to enable and disable a few and see what they do since they're not that super important to the actual texturing part of Dido, it's mostly presentation for the end. Now, one other kind of hidden thing within 
this 3D previewer is when you hit C, you'll see your color ID map. And the great thing about this is if I hold C and then hit Shift, and I click one of the color IDs, you see it opens up the material browser. So I hit the yellow material, which I want to have a goldish color. So I'm going to, let's say bronze. If I pick this material and I now hit create, it will ask me since I'm within an existing material group, so the iron one, it will ask me, do you want to create this new material within this group or not? I'm gonna hit no. And what you'll see Dido do is it will create the, the goldish material inside of the roots of your materials and it's automatically assigning it to the yellowish ID parts. So as you can see, tree do updated life. I can rotate my light around so I can see how the material behaves. You'll see it created the bronze and I still have my iron material below that. It also has most of areas of the IDs which were visible when I clicked C. So every yellow part now has the bronze material applied to it. Now that we have this, I'll first go over some of the other buttons which are in this panel. So first up, we have our exporter. In this exporter, I can set up the path and the file type and yet again the calibration and the percentage of how big I want to export my textures. And if I click the export button, it will export all of my maps to the set directory right here. So I'm going to do that for this project. So I'll show you here. I'm going to create a new folder, which is called export. Then I'm going to double click it. I'm going to copy the directory. I'm going to hit the cancel button and I'm just going to paste it right here and hit the export button. So as you can see, Dido is now creating all of the different target files. And since I set the Marmoset tool back to, it also created a Marmoset material for me which I can just import inside of Marmoset and it already has all of the materials set up in it. And I'll show you later on how you can use this for the cross app mode. The second button is the reimporter. If we click it, Dido will present us the base creator again. So let's say I bake something and while texturing, I noticed my bake wasn't perfect. I can still re-import all of my input maps and save all of the texturing work I already done without having to do it yet again. If you're uh, texturing in the traditional way, just using Photoshop, you'd have to redo practically everything since all of your baked maps would be used within those textures and it would be very tough to keep your current texturing progress and still have the new maps in there. Now with Dido, you'll just have to supply your edited map. And what Dido does, if you hit the re-render button, is apply all of the changes you made to your texturing work you already had. So you won't be losing any progress. We're not gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna click the X button, but just know you can always hit this button if something changed in your base maps. Now the next button is the save smart material from your current selection. So let's say I created my own texture setup. So I added new stuff to an existing or I created my material from scratch. 
what I can do is just hit the plus button and you see Dedu already goes to the uh, directory in which all of the materials are saved and I can save my new material out or I can override a previously created material. If I do that and I later on want to add a, the same material again, I will be able to view that material within the material browser. So it's real handy. You only have to create uh, a setup for a certain material if it isn't existent inside of the material browser already. So you only have to set it up once and then you can save it out and select it for your other project. Now the next button is for importing your own custom materials. So let's say I have an example for this. You want to create your own custom uh, letter material with your own maps you've created previously in Photoshop. You can do that. So once you hit that button, you'll see a bunch of input tabs for the different maps you have. So we'll do that right now. We'll go to the Quixel textures. And as you can see here, I have a few maps I want to input. So let's set the letter. Once I apply one of the textures, You'll also get a preview inside of Dedu for that new material you're creating. So I'm also going to load my specular map, which is this one. Then I'm going to load my gloss. And I also have a normal map. The new material will look like this. If you're happy with this results, and you don't have any more maps to input, you can click the Create Material button and it will present you in the right directory for the materials. So I have Custom, Fabric, Letter and I'm just gonna overwrite this one since I've already done it once before but I'll show you what Dedu does. So once I save it out, it will generate all of the required patterns Dedu uses and it will make a nice little preview for your uh, material browser. I'm gonna add a material right here so you can see you can also add a smart material, a material or a clean layer. I'm just gonna add a material the first one you see here is the letter I created. You also have the folder structure you had in the previous maps you saw when I was creating the textures. So custom fabric letter. You can see my letter is available right here. It is this nice preview of what the material looks like. So let's hit the create button. Since I didn't use the C and then shift click command, it will be creating the letter material without a mask, as you can see. So it's now a top layer without masking, so that means it will override everything. So everything has that letter material on it, which is not what we want. So what I can do is either I can click here and go find the proper uh, color ID. I think it's this one. So if I click this, it will assign the material to the right color for me. And I don't have to set it up anywhere else. Or what you can also do is go inside your mask editor And you'll see it gives a live preview of your current mask. And if I go here, I have the links button with the mask ID editor again. So you can zoom in and find the right ID area. If I click it, it will assign it to the selected 
area once I click the done button. So what you can also do is if you have multiple IDs to which you want to assign the current material, you can hold control. You can first click once, then hold uh, control and click another one. And you'll see in your Photoshop documents, it's previewing all of the mask areas. If I now click the done button, and I click done here, you will see it applied the letter material to a lot more color IDs than only the brown one. So you see now all of this is letter. I'm just going to click this again so it applies it only to the brown areas of the color IDs. So here we are. As I mentioned before, you have different ways of creating materials. So here you have the add smart material, add a normal material, add a clean layer. Once you adjust things, Dido usually saves your projects, but if you want to make sure Dido saves, you can always press the save all maps button right below. So you'll be sure it's uh, saved all your progress on texturing. So if there's a crash or something, you'll be sure everything is still the same way uh, you had it before. Now we have our letter texture right here. We'll zoom in just a bit. And it has a few options below here. First you have the scale. We'll set it to, let's say, 2. And it will apply that scale to all of the different texture types I have on top of here. And you can see it decreased the tiling of my texture, so everything got bigger. Then we have our texture intensity. This one is set per map, so if I decrease it here, it will not be decreased in, for example, my gloss map or my normal map. It will still be the value it had before. So if I lower it in the albedo, it won't be changed in the normal or in the specular. But if you change the scale, it does change in all of the other maps, since that's usually what you want. Let's increase this again. Now, if I change the color to something like this, you'll see the color of the letter material also change here. Then we have our opacity, which you'll have on normal materials and also on, if I select a material group, you'll see it also has the opacity slider. Then next to that, you have the amount and you have a few buttons. For the texture one, you have a few modes in which you can blend the texture on top of the color that's assigned. And for the opacity, you can set a different blending mode for the entire layer. So if I set it to multiply, for instance, it will only in the albedo tab set your layer to uh, multiply. So you see it became a lot darker since it's now blending with the stuff that's below it and has the same masking as this does. So the base layer of everything is gray. So it's now multiplying this letter texture with the gray that's below it. But yet again, it won't apply this blending mode 
on all of the textures since, for instance, for normal maps, you wouldn't want to set something to multiply in here. If you want, let's say, multiply on both albedo and specular, you'll have to also set the multiply in the specular tab for it to behave that way. But we don't really want that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the letter texture right now. For groups also you see the smart materials always have this nice little group to which you can set a masking type of itself. So if you want more things grouped you can hold control and select multiple things. So let's say I want the bronze and the iron masked into one group. You can select both of them by holding control, clicking the two of them and then hitting this button right here which is group selected and what you'll see DDo does is it creates one group and if you go inside of that you'll see your two materials you had previously or the materials groups you had previously and you can go inside of them if I press the back button you'll go one step up until you hit the all, which is the root of all your uh, textures you have. Now, I don't really want those two grouped, so what you have to do is you can select the layer, hold alt, and then press the group button again. And this will ungroup your currently selected group. So now I have my bronze and my iron again without them being inside of a group. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to really start texturing this guy. I want to give it a fur material. I already in a previous attempt made a material which has this uh, the look for the fur I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go into 3D shift click only the gray uh, areas of the material ID. The purple areas are also going to be fur but since I'm only clicking the gray ones it's only going to apply it first to the gray areas. So I'll go inside of here then in the stylized tab you see I have a brown fur material. There's a few others in there which you can pick but I'm just going to go for the brown fur and hit create. So in a previous texturing uh, attempt I set up this fur material and then I saved it out using the create smart material from selected. So what you'll see in a second here is that it applied all of the layer settings and all of the masking I set up previously. So here we are. If we go inside of the fur material you'll see I have a few layers. But what I'm going to do now is I need to make sure my other color ID is also applying the fur. In the end it's going to be a grayish fur, so I'll show you how to do that too. But first let's go one step back, hit the mask by left clicking it and what it will do is open the Dynamask editor. So expand this and go to the links option which opens the mask ID editor. So I had the gray areas which I'm selecting, then I'm gonna hold control and I'm also gonna select the purple area. Now I know I also want the skin inside of this mask since I want the skin to blend with the fur a bit, 
So I'm also going to hold control and click the red areas inside of my color ID. And that should be it for now. So I'm going to click done. And if I click done now here, you will see it's applied the brown fur to all of the other areas as well. So I'm going to zoom out. Let's see this. So you see the skin areas are also using the fur. As I mentioned previously, I want some white fur on the purple areas. You see, since you have to have like the hard edges for the masking, just applying a white color on top of it will create this very sharp mask. So let's do that first. But of course we are not going to want just like a hard edge in here. Here we are. We have the white color applied. Since it doesn't have any mask applied right here, it's going to overwrite everything within the fur group. Well, everything below the current color. So I'll have to apply my links properly. And I only want the purple areas to be affected. So I'm just going to click them and hit the done button. I'm also going to increase the blur by one. So as you can see, Dido previews the masking right here. But let's say I want to see what the actual mask does to the materials. What you can do is hit this quick preview button right here. And what Dido will do is show you what the mask is doing to the actual textures. You see, since I added the color before, it's uh, it also overrides like the specular value and the gloss value, so we'll have to fix that later on. So we don't have these very highlighted edges and it's still the same as the brown fur. So that's basically what we want. Now we have the still pretty sharp edges around the gray areas. and we want it to be a bit more like blurred. So inside of our material ID tab, we have a blur factor. If we increase it, you have to be careful with it depending on your map size. So I'll set this to eight right now. And normally you'll see it updated in here. So it's already a lot blurrier around the edges, which is what we want. But I think I'm going to increase it even more. So let's say I add something like 16, which is the double of what it is now. So what do I want from this? I'm going to add a texture to my masking. I'm going to also disable the previewing so I can see what the texture actually does to my masking. Let's say I want something to break up the edges of my masking. So I'm going to take the cracked concrete and going to press the switch button. Here we go. You see it already adjusted this. So I'm going to disable my quick preview. And here you see the texture is applied to the masking. Now, of course, this is way too strong and I don't want a lot of the black areas. 
so I can just tone back some of the components. I only want the albedo in there really. So it's already a less a lot less contrasty. Now I do want more wide areas to come through, so first let's reduce the scale to make the detail smaller. So this is the tiling of the texture which is reduced by reducing the scale. And then I'm gonna up the contrast so the white areas come through more. Now the black areas of course also come through more since I up the contrast so I can adjust the brightness of the entire thing so I'll have more white areas. So masking, since you have live previewing, becomes a real trial and error kind of thing since you can fine tune the results you want out of it. And then I'll preview it on here. You see it breaks up the color a bit, uh, it's still too heavy for me so I'll just lower the contrast. So a lot more white will be visible again and it's blurred out a bit more and then I'll reduce the actual texture slider here. For each tab there's uh, there's more options, so you can hide or unhide, well enable, disable a certain masking type. You can set the opacity, you can also invert all of the settings you applied in here, so it will be the inverted result. I'm gonna undo this. And then you have the blending mode in which it is applied to the overall masking. So it's all built up on top of each other. So if I put this to normal, it will override some of the previous masking I did. Now, this looks okay for now. So I'm going to click the done button. You can, of course, like with anything, you can still save a preset. Let's say I want to use this another time, I can save a preset. So I can load it on something else uh, later on. I also have a few more post-processing options. If I add a bunch of things here, and I'm not quite getting the result I want. I can still tweak the overall masking of everything like in here. So you see I accidentally enabled the ambient occlusion too, which actually gives kind of a nice result since the crevices will be a bit darker opposed to the top parts of the fur. But I'm going to reduce this and as I mentioned before, you can adjust the overall tightness, then the black and white balance, contrast. You can go really deep with the masking here to get the actual result you want out of it. But I'm going to press done right now, if everything's generated. Okay, so press done. Next up, let's make sure we don't have those strong highlights anymore inside of the white parts. So how am I going to do this? First, maybe let's rename this color fill by double clicking and then calling it white fur, hitting return and then it applied the name. If we now go to the speckler, 
So we want the white parts to have the same specular values as the brown parts. The easiest way to do this, either you can set the opacity to zero here, or you can actually negate the overall result by putting it to a mid gray and setting it to overlay. So that also works, but maybe it's faster to just scroll back the opacity of this layer. Let's do the same for the class. And now it should have the same values as the brown fur underneath it, so it will react the same to the lighting. Next up, let's address the nose material. So I'll go back. So currently it's called iron. If I double click it and I adjust the name and press enter, it will apply this name to that material group. And you'll see it has applied uh, to all the different maps. So I can always just go to the nose material and I'll know what it is. Um, then I'll adjust the specular value to be a lot less intense. So I'll darken this. Okay. So here we are. maybe a bit more intense and add a bit more texture to it. So as you can see, it's a lot of tweaking and seeing what works and what doesn't. Next up, I'll apply the leather material. I'm going to see if I already have an existing one, which I can use or if I'm going to take another one. So I'll go to fabric. There isn't any letter in here, so I'll just see in my normal material list. And there's the letter material I created earlier. So I'll hit the create button and it will create the leather material above the nose material. Now I can apply the masking, but since I'm going to make my own multi-layered material out of this, what I'm going to do is I'm, I have this selected right now and I'm going to hit the group selected button. So it will create a group for my letter material and in this group I'm going to apply the right color masking. So I'm gonna mask it to this color which should apply the masking to only this area. So as you can see now it applied the letter to all of these straps I have in here. If I rotate around, I can see how the texture behaves. So now let's add some weathering around the edges so I can go inside of the material. And what I'm going to do is add a clean layer with just a color so I can darken the edges of the material. So how am I going to do this? I only want the edges of the letter parts you can see right here. There's a few ways to do this. Maybe I can address the ambient occlusion. 
but even that ambient occlusion isn't very strong it won't come true as much as I'd want it to so I'm actually going to use the ID mask for the edges so I'll show you how that's done I have my new layer I'm going to rename this to darker color then I'll go to the albedo and I'll set the actual color to be something darkish red and press OK so you can see the effect it has now let's set the overlay mode to multiply so it's very dark right now and slide back the opacity so we'll tweak this later on but first what I'm gonna do is hit the mask button so I'm going to work with the material IDs for the masking and the preview masking will be a nice way to see what's going on so I'm gonna hit the links button and I'm going to select the letter ID parts click done so it applies all of the masking to the material now I'm gonna increase the blur to something around let's say 4 and you'll see now the white is blurred around the edges now we don't want this result but we want the opposite so just hit the invert button right here so now my edges will have uh, the actual darker color uh, coming through more I think I'm going to increase the blur to something around uh, let's say 6 like this and now I also want to break up the smooth transition so I'm going to activate a texture we now hit the texture icon and here I'll choose something with quite some noise and no let's say galvanized metal and switch to that and see what it does so you see it nicely breaks up the blurred parts and you might think to yourself well now everything here is also white but since my main texture group is masked to only affect this these things won't be getting the actual letter material so it's only masking of the edges since the group has another mask on it now that we have this masking done let's crank up the opacity again so you can see the edges are now having the darker color appear at the side of them and I'll just increase my blurring since I think it should be a bit bigger the blur is very sensitive so watch out this is way too much let's set it to 10 I think this will do and then I'll increase the tightness so it will be a lot more apparent
now I'll reduce the opacity again So the speckler of the actual letter is way too much and I think the normal map too so I'll go to the speckler and I'll decrease well first the darker color I'm going to set to zero so that already affects the darker areas in it and then I'm gonna reduce this specular value maybe make the gloss value a bit broader so I'll reduce this So you see you can just adjust uh, the values, let it update and make sure it behaves the way you want it to. Also always check with the light if it's doing what you want it to. I'm going to adjust the base color a bit to something slightly darker. Let's say this and see what that gives us. So that might be a bit too desaturated, so I'm gonna increase the saturation. So yeah, that's good for now. So now let's start addressing the cloth parts. For the cloth, I know there are a few good materials inside of Dedo already. So I'm going to hit the C button, then hold shift and click the orange part. Then I'm going to go to fabric and I think I'm going to just go with the black cotton. Do you want to create it within the current group? No, since it doesn't have to be within the letter uh, texture group. So once Dido has generated all of the textures for that material group I can just adjust the color to what the actual concept had the cool thing is yeah you can adjust the color and see if something works better than your previous attempts then you can keep it or I am going to actually adjust the cotton color to the orangey color the concept had. So I think something like this. Well, that's too light, so I'm going to increase the saturation and maybe make it a bit darker. Maybe the saturation is too overkill, so if I turn the lights around, but lighting conditions also play a big part. So if I adjust the lighting and then check out my texture, I'll keep it at this for now. And I'm gonna do a few more things with it. So we have this base for the cloth. You can see it has a texture and a color. Now, what I want is I want 
a few darker areas in the crevices. So I'm already within the black cotton group. We have this dirt, which is set to white at the moment. And I'm going to actually make this a bit darker since it's already affecting the crevices of the material and I'm gonna set it to something darkish red and let's see how that affects our material also the edge where I think it's set to linear dodge or a color dodge which will make these lighter areas right here. I might want to instead of... well now this one is set to color burn. So here we are. It's a bit hard so I'm going to decrease the capacity until I find something that's more suitable to what I want. It's still a bit much. So yeah, that's about it. So that's okay. Let's just call this uh, orange cloth. Hit enter and it will apply the name. So now that we have this, I'm going to do the same for the pants. Hold C, then Alt Shift and hit the pants color ID. Go to the blue jeans and click the create button. Now if you have a lot of these presets for materials already made you can see texturing becomes a very quick and adjustable process so you can test out a lot of things very quickly without the need to having to redo a lot of stuff each and every time. So I can set up like the thing I did for the orange cloth. If I want to have it, well, use it the next time, I can just hit this, then hit the save smart material from selected. Then I'll go to, let's call this stylized fabric and create a new folder called cloth hit enter and call this orange cloth so it already takes the name of your currently selected uh, material or material group and here we are okay it told me it's generated the material correctly so tree do is refreshing and if I now let's say I want these wraps to have the same material as this I can hit control shift click it now let's go to fabric no it's stylized and then we see we have our orange cloth right in here and we if we hit the create button it will create a new material group for my smart material I created and apply it to the cloth wraps see what that gives us so yeah, you can see it applied the same material to the cloth wraps. Now I don't want that, so I'm gonna just delete it out. 
So that's gone again and hit C, Shift. Click the purple color again and just select the cloth wrap which is already within DDO. So you see we have this nice cloth wrap material assigned to our mesh. And then all we still need to adjust is actually the nails and the teeth for this texturing tutorial. So as you can see it's really fast. So yet again, well hit C then shift, look for something that's suitable for the teeth as a base. So I'll, I'm mostly looking for something which already has the right specularity and class values on it. So even though it's a totally different material. So let's go with this one. Kind of seems okay for the teeth material I'm going to create. So I'll hit the create button and it will create my texture group only applied to the teeth. Yeah, of course they're black since the material uh, was black, but I can just adjust the color as I've shown with some other materials. So what do we have here? We have a dirt base metal black and base metal black. Let's group these textures. Let's go inside of the group. Let's see what this is. Grainy metal. So I'll adjust this color. By doing this, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to ungroup this by holding Alt, hitting the Group Selected button. And same for this. So we have that mask and then we'll also adjust this to something darker. Let's go back and we still need to set the right color ID. So it's the green one so we hit this one here. So now this is applied and we can continue adjusting the material this way. So let's say I want a darker color at the bottom. How can we do this? Just add a clean layer. Then we're going to set it to a darker color. Click OK. Then I'm going to adjust the masking and I'm going to enable the ambient occlusion. And the gradient. Now, so the gradient has a few options. The top to bottom means the map I supplied, well, actually was a gradient from the top to the bottom. Then I'm going to be adjusting the balance. Maybe I'm going to first disable the ambient occlusion so I can only see the 
gradient masking. Then I'll adjust the balance. So you can see it becomes a lot tighter. Oh, that's too much. So I'll reduce this. Something like this. Then maybe I can adjust the offset to be more around the area. So I'm going to make sure the white starts where the teeth around the area where the teeth are located I'm going to reduce the balance no up the balance and up the balance some more so let's hold C to see where the actual gradient appears and then I'll adjust the offset again to make sure it's at the right parts so yeah now it's way too sharp but I can adjust the balance yet again or do this and then I'm going to reduce the tightness of the post processes so it's a lot softer and then I'm gonna activate the ambient occlusion again so it multiplies over everything and you can see it's darker at the bottom and it already has like a sharper kind of dirt on it because the balance created the contrasty gradient. Now what I can also do is enable my material IDs, then select the teeth right in here. I think they're located... Oh, here they are. So is the green one. You can always press C and see which uh, color the area has. And I'm gonna click Done. And of course it didn't do much since these are being applied on top of it. So this is set to multiply and the gradient is set to, well, so yeah, this is better. I'm going to invert the overall. Maybe increase the brightness so and increase the tightness again well, so these areas are gonna get the darker color assigned to them increase the contrast let's see what it gives us well yeah and click done to see how our darker color is applied to the masking so yeah you can use any masking type on it see if it works or if it doesn't and if it doesn't you can adjust it again um, maybe the gloss value is a bit too tight so I'm going to adjust that too well first make sure the darker color isn't affecting the ones beneath it and then I'm gonna adjust the gloss value to something around here I 
And let's see what that does. Well, that's okay for now. So we still need to also apply the skin. I want the skin to be located within the fur group so I can blend it. So press C, Shift, click it. And in the material editor, I'm going to select the, well, I can hit skin here in the upper part. And there we have already a few different pre-made skins. I'm going to go with the exaggerated skin and hit the create button. Do you want to create it within the group? Then I'm going to hit yes, because I want it inside of the fur group. And what you'll see in a moment is that it's applied the skin on top of the fur. So we still have that hard edge, which we don't really want. Go to the albedo and go inside the exaggerated skin. You can see it set up all the layers for the skin, but what we want to do is go to the ID links, so the material IDs, and increase the blur value of it so you'll see it blurs the edges, well actually the entire thing, so it will be less sharp, which is what you want for the skin areas, so it isn't that hard edge in the transition of uh, fur to skin. Okay, so you see this, now this has this nice soft transition. Maybe I want to make the ears a bit wetter. So what else do we want to do? Maybe add something for the nails. Actually, maybe the teeth material will be suitable for the fingernails. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the material for the teeth, which was the green one. So I can look here. Oh, it was this one. Maybe adjust the name to be more clear. So hit enter. We have this. So adjust the masking to also include the fingernails. So first I'll select the teeth again and then I'll control click one of the black areas which corresponds with the fingernails. So apply this, and as you can see, it's applying all of the textures also onto the nails. They're a bit dark right now, so I'll adjust. Well, that's actually because of the gradient map that's applied on it. It kind of works with the black fur, so I'm just going to keep it this way. And now we'll let's adjust the jeans color to something more suitable to the concept. So it was this more brownish color. Adjust it here see what it does. Uh, 
that's a bit too light so make it darker and then I'll adjust the edge color to something greenish like the concept has so it isn't realistic but it's it's like a stylized choice which you can make it's not because you're working within Dido that everything needs to be 100% correct you can do whatever you want when it comes to the texturing part if you want to make 100% accurate PBR textures you can but it's not that you're limited to it so if you're doing more stylized stuff well Dido can handle it so you can see now we got pretty much everything textured off camera I went ahead and uh, tweaked all of the materials to be more of a finalized result so I can show you the cross app mode and if I click this button right here so the cross app button I'll be presented with a few options uh, application I'm going to be using Marmoset Toolback 2 so it's set to that I'm going to hide Photoshop and enable the fuse apps button then I'm gonna press the link apps button so now Dido is uh, exporting all of the textures and you can see I still have my Dido panel right here even though Photoshop isn't opened anymore it is still working in the background so in a moment you'll see everything has been exported I can close 3 do since I'm previewing inside of Marmoset and then I'm gonna press import and select the material presets Dido automatically made for us so I can just drag this onto my model I'm gonna make sure my attributes have their own texture assigned and here we are my final presentation for this project and the great thing about the cross app mode now is if I want to for instance let's say I want a different fur color I'm gonna make it a bit more yellowish I'm gonna press OK and what we should see is you see it adjusted my textures I can preview them right away which is a real time saver uh, if you're working this way you can directly see inside of your uh, engine or tool bag if the textures are doing what you want them to you can still use 3 do at the same time too to see what uh, the textures are doing in a different lighting condition so there's really a lot of options which you can explore and test your textures with and that's it I've shown you all of the options or most of the options at least that Dido has to offer uh, I hope it served well as a basic introduction to the toolset and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with and create using Dido.